Uh, hey booktube, it's Sia and I am here with my massive book haul over the last three months. Um, so this is everything that I've hauled for August, September, and October. Um, there's quite a bit here. I'm very happy with all these purchases and I figured it was about time to finally do a book haul for you guys. Um, I'll kind of go through everything um, in the month that I got them, but they're not really going to be in like any specific order or anything. Um, there's some mix of some new books, some used books, some graphic novels. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So for August, I bought a total of five things. Four out of the five were brand new graphic novels and then one was a used book. So I'll first show you the book that I got and that is Voyager by Diana Gabaldon. This is the third book in the Outlander series. I am slowly collecting these in the like big floppy paperbacks because I love these big floppy paperbacks and they're hard to find and they're very expensive new so um I found it at my used bookstore it's in you know used condition it's not terrible but um I haven't read the second one yet but I'm slowly collecting the series and this was the next one I needed so I'm really excited to dive back into the series very soon and then the four graphic novels that I picked up in August is Spider Gwen Volume 4 Predators. I haven't read this yet, um, but this was the next one that we needed in the Spider Gwen series. Don't know much about this particular volume. It's just the next in the series, so we picked that up. Then we also picked up Batgirl Volume 4 Strange Loop. Again, I don't know what this particular volume is about. I have actually haven't read any of the Batgirl books yet, um, but this is the last one in this rebirth run so we picked this up and then we picked up heavy vinyl riot on the road um this is actually something i had never heard about i happened to see it at the comic book store and it looked like something i was going to enjoy it the art style is absolutely adorable um it is by boombox who writes one of my favorite series fence um and so i figured it was worth a try i enjoyed this so much my only downside of this was I wish it was a little longer, um, but I'll go into that in my wrap up. But I picked this up, really, really enjoyed it. If you love like YA graphic novels, if you really love like anything by Boombox, then this is definitely something you will want to pick up. Um, but basically it follows this group of girls who work in a record shop and that is kind of their the front for their like underground um girl group vigilante kind of thing that they do um and it's really adorable definitely great for young readers even adults as well um female empowerment female empowerment just a great great group of like friends and um definitely worth a read but we picked this up and then the last thing that we picked up in august is fence volume three. Oh my god i love fence it's probably one of my favorite graphic novel series of the year um i think that the art style is just absolutely adorable it's such a fun graphic novel series and it's just so innocent and so sweet and i absolutely love it um this is the last volume that is out i believe this is up it's a collab it's i believe it's actually the last thing that she has written for this series so far. I don't know if this is the end of it, um, but it's just the most recent that she's written up to. I have read this. I did really enjoy it. I'll talk about it more in my wrap up, but I am so excited that I finally own this. I'm so excited to have this to complete the collection and to add to the shelves. And then for September, I bought seven things, five books, two graphic novels. I will show you the graphic novels first, and that is Spider Gwen Volume 5, uh, Gwen Num, and Spider Gwen Volume 6, The Life of Gwen Stacy. These are the last two that we needed. Um, volume 6 is actually the most recent that is out, and plan on getting to these very soon, but we decided just to pick up the rest of the series and finish it out. So we picked up these two. And then I had credit at one of my used bookstores, so I picked up two books, the first one being City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. This has been on my TBR for quite a while. Um, basically, it's about this a uh, 19 year old named Vivian who was just kicked out of Vassar College in 1940 owing to her owing to her lackluster freshman year performance. Her parents send her to Manhattan to live with her aunt who owns a flamboyant crumbling midtown theater called the Lily Playhouse. Vivian is introduced to an entire cosmos of unconventional and charismatic characters from the fun chasing showgirls to the playboy actor, a grand dame actress, a lady killer writer, and a no-nonsense stage banner, but manager. But when Vivian makes a personal mistake that results in professional scandal, it turns her new world upside down in ways that will take her 
years to fully understand. Ultimately, it will lead her to a new understanding of the kind of life she craves and the kind of freedom it takes to pursue it. It will also lead to the love of her life. Now 89 years old and telling the story at last, Vivian recalls how the events of those years altered the course of her life, the course of her life and the gusto in which she approached it. At some point in a woman's life, she just gets tired of being ashamed of all the time. After that, she is free to become whoever she truly is. So I'm really excited to read it. It takes place in New York in 1940s, two things I really love. It feels like it's gonna be very um, feminist, so I'm really excited to get to this. And then I also picked up The City of Brass by S.A. Trucker Barty. This has also been on my TBR for quite a while. I don't know much about this. Um, I know it's a fantasy. I believe it's an adult fantasy, actually. Um, it takes place in 18th century Cairo. The main character is a con woman. She makes her living swindling Ottoman nobles, hoping to one day earn enough to change her fortunes. But when she accidentally summons Dara, an equally sly, darkly mysterious Jin warrior, during one of her cons, she learns that even the cleverest of schemes can have deadly consequences. I am really, really excited to read this. I've heard really good things about it, and I feel like it's going to be like the perfect um, like winter fantasy to pick up because it's nice and chunky, um, but I'm really excited to get to this very, very soon. And then while at Barnes and Noble, uh, browsing the shelves as one does on a Friday night, I came across There Will Come a Darkness by Katie Rose Poole. Um, they were actually running a special on this as it was like a debut spotlight. It was a half off, so it ended up only being like $10. Um, I know this is a new release. It just came out this year. I don't remember when, but I'm really excited to read it. Um, it sounds really good. It's another kind of just YA fantasy, um, but it says here, for generations, the seven prophets used their visions of the future to end wars and unite nations until the day, 100 years later, when they disappeared. All they left behind was one final secret prophecy foretelling an age of darkness and the birth of a new prophet who could be the world's salvation or the cause of its destruction. With chaos on the horizon, five lives are set on a collision course. A prince exiled from his kingdom, a ruthless killer known as the Pale Hand, known as the Pale Hand, a once faithful leader torn between his duty and his heart, a reckless gambler with the power to find anything or anyone, and a dying girl on the verge of giving up. One of them, or all of them, could break the world. Will they be a savior or destroyer? I'm really excited to read this. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get to this, but I'm hoping very, very soon. Um, and I love this cover. It's got, like, some raised elements on it. And it's got, like, a map on the end pages. And I've heard pretty decently good things about it. So I'm really excited to hopefully get to it very soon. And then my book club, my YA book club that I am in, and the book club book for October was Boneless Mercies by April Genevieve to Colt. Um, I do love this cover. I just love the simplicity of it. I love that it's got like the raised lettering on the spine and on the cover. General consensus was we enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a little bit less than everybody else. I gave it like three, three and a half stars. Um, this is like a reimagining of Beowulf following Frey and her band of boneless mercies. Um, but it's not as thick as I was expecting it to be, but, um, I do really, I did enjoy it and I love this cover. And my one little splurge for the month, I'm so excited. It was a brand new September release and it's been on my TBR for so long. It was like one of my, it's one of my most anticipated releases of the year. And that is Five Dark Fate, which is the fourth and final book in the Three Dark Crown series. Um, I am so excited to get to this. I have plans to read it in November. Um, I am so, so, so excited to dive into this finale. Love the cover. Love it's actually a signed first edition, um, but I am so, so excited to dive into this. Also a little weary because it's the final book and I love this series and I'm kind of nervous going in because I don't want it to be over, but I'm really like, excited to see what happens. And then for October, it's the biggest haul for this month. and uh, It's 12 things, five graphic novels, uh, five um, novels and seven graphic novels. So I'll show you uh, my first, I'll show you first the novels. The first one being The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sapetti. This was my October choice for book of the month. This thing is quite a chunker. Um, it's definitely bigger than I was expecting it to be, but I'm really excited to read this. I've heard nothing but great things. Um, I been wanting to read a lot more historical fiction this winter, so maybe this is one I pick up. Um, it takes place in Madrid in 1957 under the oppression of 
Under the oppressive dictatorship of General Francisco Franco, Spain is hiding a dark secret. Tourists and foreign businessmen flood into Spain under the welcoming promise of sunshine and wine. And among them is an 18-year-old Daniel, the son of an oil tycoon, who arrives in Madrid with his parents, hoping to connect with the country of his mother's birth through the lens of his camera. Photography and fate introduces him to Anna, whose family interweaving obstacles reveal the lingering grasp of the Spanish Civil War, as well as chilling definitions of fortune and fear. Daniel's photographs leave him with uncomfortable questions amidst shadows of danger. He is backed into a corner of difficult decisions to protect those he loves. Lives and hearts collide, revealing an incredibly dark side to the sunny Spanish city. I haven't read a lot about Spain. Um, I haven't read a lot of books about that take place in Spain or that, that are about Spain. So I'm really excited to dive into this. It's a little outside my comfort zone, but um, I'm really excited to give it a try. And then for book of the month YA, I picked up These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling because I wanted kind of a fun Halloween read. Um, I am currently reading it. I am like 67 pages in or so. I'm enjoying it. Um, uh, basically, this is follows Hannah and she lives in Salem. She is an elemental witch and her and her ex-girlfriend kind of get caught up in killings that are going on in Salem. Um, it's a YA contemporary, but it's like Halloween contemporary. I'm really enjoying it. Um, it's very cute so far and um, it kind of seems like the perfect Halloween read because I didn't want something like really spooky. I wanted something kind of um, a quick read to kind of since I'm going through a slump I wanted something that was going to be like a light read and kind of easy to get through but also was Halloween themed and this was the perfect fit. Um, so I'm enjoying it so far and can't wait to see where the story goes. I also love how it's got like crystals on it and um, like these are supposed to be like tarot, like tarot cards. So I'm really enjoying it and um, picked this up. And then while I was at my used bookstore last night, I picked up a copy of Aberat by Clark Barker. Yes, I do already own Aberat. Um, we own all three, but we own the second book in this like illustrated edition. Um, and so we've been trying to collect the rest of them. Um, and I found this last night and we had some credit, so we picked it up. And these illustrations were actually done by Clive Barker and they're absolutely stunning. Um, and so we've been wanting to own these editions. So I picked this up. And um, if you don't know, Abra is this really interesting middle grade YA-ish fantasy that follows Candy Quackenbush as she discovers um, that there's this whole land called the Abrat where each island is a different hour of the day and um, lots of things happen and she gets mixed up in some things and meets some people along the way and I enjoy it. It's a fun little read. Um, the illustrations definitely help the story and so we've been trying to find this edition and I'm really happy that I finally found it. Now I just need to get the third one in this edition and we'll have the matching set. And then I picked up two books from Book Outlet. I haven't made a Book Outlet order in I don't even know how long. The main purpose of the book Ella order was the graphic novels, which I'll show you, but I wanted to pick up my book club book for November, and that's The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. This has been also been on my TBR for quite a while. This thing is also a chunker, bigger than I was expecting, um, but I've heard really good things about it. Um, it takes place in modern day New York, deals with magic and um, time travel. And so I'm really excited to read it. And it's my November book for my book club. So I needed to be able to pick it up and I found it on Book Outlet like really cheap. So I'm really excited to start reading this this week. And then because I needed an extra book in order to qualify for free shipping, I picked up Tales of, I picked up Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Tales of the Slayer, Stories from Tales of the Slayer Volume 1 and Volume 2. I don't know much about this. Um, I know it's some, it's like several short stories within the Buffy universe. Um, and I needed to add a couple dollars for free shipping. And this was like 2 or $3. So I don't know when I'm going to get around to this. This was just kind of a add-on because I needed a couple extra dollars for free shipping. And then at my used bookstore, we found a copy of East of West Volume 1 and Volume 2. I honestly don't know much about these. I've heard that they're kind of like Westworld or like a space Western kind of thing. Um, my boyfriend really wanted them and we had some credit. So we figured we'd pick up the first two volumes and give it a try. Um, I don't know much about them, but I figured I would include them in this haul. And then the main purpose of our book outlet haul was the rest of the Green Lantern run. Um, so we picked up volume three, Polarity, 
volume four, the first ring, volume five, out of time, volume six, a world of our own, and then volume seven, superhuman trafficking. So we are all caught up now on the Green Lantern Rebirth run. Um, I'm really excited to dive into all of these. We own the first two volumes um, and graphic novels are not cheap new. So, um, so when I saw the book outlet had the rest of this run at, at much better prices and they're all in really decently condition. I mean, yeah, you can tell that like they're used and they've got a little bit of wear and tear, but nothing crazy and it, they're all still in, pretty decently conditioned and they're readable and they'll be nice on the shelves. So I'm really excited to own uh, the rest of the series and seven is actually the most recent volume that's out. So we are officially caught up and I can't wait to read them. And um, the Green Lantern Rebirth series is one of them is like my second favorite of the Rebirth series. So I'm really excited to give the rest of these a read. So here is my book haul over the last three months. I did go a little overboard, but I'm set for on books for quite a while. Um, and I probably won't be buying, I'm on a little bit of a book buying ban. Um, the only books I plan on getting are like whatever I get for book, for my birthday and Christmas. If you have read any of these or have any thoughts, comments, and opinions about them, please let me know down in the comments below. And um, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the little bell if you like to get notified of when I post new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy reading. I hope you are well and I will see you guys next time. Bye.